this episode of Extraordinary Women TV. I'm here at Woodbine Racetrack speaking with Emma Jane Wilson, jockey and one of Canada's most influential female athletes. Well, Emma, it's really great being here. Let's just talk a little bit about your journey um, to becoming a jockey. Now, I know that you started uh, horse lessons, horse riding lessons at nine. What inspired you to want to take horse lessons, horse riding lessons? Well, the inspiration alone was the horses. I mean, I was a very uh, competitive person when I was a child. Anything in, well, I guess even still now, I'm very competitive. My sisters can attest to that. But um, horses were always my, my first love. And uh, to take horses and competition and, and, and mix them together, I mean you get horse racing and it was just the greatest thing to me. Um, I remember coming here when I was a kid, I think once I came to the races once with my parents, I was hooked, absolutely hooked. Um, birthday birthday parties were, were spent at Woodbine, you know, on the, the old apron, right down on the white picket fence and the picnic tables with, with the family watching the horses go by and it was just, it was uh, quite a sight and spectacle and I wanted to be a part of that. And what was the feeling that you got when you were riding those horses when you first racing? Was it a sense of freedom? Was it the wind at your back? Or what was it? Uh, you know what? A every person that's been, you know, in a, in a riding lesson or on horseback can with confidence can say that they've, they've wanted to see how fast they could go on that horse. And when I was in lessons, that was we always wanted to go out into the backfield and just turn them loose, so to speak. Um, and by rights, you know, it was other people's horses. I never owned my own horse, so I didn't get a chance to have that freedom. So then to come out, not just uh, to get on horses and have those trainers, those owners ask me to have those horses go as fast as I could make them, being asked to, to ride and, and, and go as literally as fast as you can make this horse go. And I was getting paid to do it. And it's, I mean, it's, I, I don't come to work ever. I, I live my dream every single day, and this is not a job for me. This is, this is an absolute dream. Who was uh, the most influential person um, for you growing up in your life? My parents. I mean, looking back on, on it now, and, and you realize the lessons that they teach you uh, as a young child and then as, as a teenager, and as much as um, you don't want to listen to them and, and you think that they're out to get you, those, those lessons that they taught me uh, as I was growing up, as well as my sisters and my family, they, they influenced me to be who I am, my work ethic, you know, my moral compass, things like that. That, that is all from my family and my parents and, and the, the guidance that they gave me. You've raced <clears throat> uh, approximately 10,000 times. You've had uh, about a thousand first place wins and a thousand or so second place wins and so on and so forth. Um, what does it feel like to to like to win? That's that is something I wish absolutely everybody in this in the world could experience. Um, there's nothing like it. I mean, you're getting on the back of a 1,200 pound primed athlete, primed a animal, and asking them to compete, to, to, to run as fast as they can for you. It's not like getting in a car, starting the engine and putting your foot on the gas. You put your foot on the gas, the car goes. You put your foot on the, on the brake, the car stops. You turn the steering wheel. These horses are individuals. Anybody that knows animals knows that you're, you can have three dogs and they're all different personalities. Every single one of these animals has a different personality. So to get on the back of this animal and, and, and connect and, and become on the same page, and it sounds kind of cheesy, but become one with the horse. You really are melding with that animal and, and you have a common goal and a common focus. And, and, and to feel that horse strive and reach and 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 try for you and and do what you're asking it's it's unbelievable now you um are one of few uh jockeys female jockeys uh in canada i mean it's a you know it's a it's, it has long roots as a male sort of dominated industry or field what is it like being a, a female jockey and especially one that's winning the Queen's Plate. I mean, you're the first female jockey to win the Queen's Plate. Um, when, you, when you're surrounded by men, what's it like for you? Well, it's, it's an interesting dynamic because 
I'm very much of the belief. I, I downplay the the female card. That's it's not. I'm not. I'm not a, a female jockey. I'm I'm a jockey. I'm I'm just like everybody else. I have different strengths and different weaknesses and different skills that I bring to the table. That being said, when you become the first female to win a Canada's horse race, the Queen's Plate, you have to take a step back and acknowledge that for what it is. Because, I mean, for so many years throughout everything that we've done, you know, women. Women's role in society has changed significantly, and that the Queen's Plate is is significant of that milestone of that um, you know the, the the way times have changed, and and I can appreciate that. That's those moments where I take that step back, and and you can appreciate women in the sport. And is there uh, ever time you have to? Um in bonding with the horses, I mean, do you do you bond with them, and then, and then when you're not racing with them, then what happens to that bond? You know, that's why I got into the game. I got into the the game of horse racing because I love horses, um, first and foremost. So of course, there's that bond. Some horses you spend more time with. It, it, we do race on essentially a one race contract. So um, we'll ride the horse in one race, and and then you work to be able to ride that horse back again. Sometimes there are the you're the only jockey that ever sits on that horse in a horse race. Sometimes multiple horse uh, jockeys ride those horses, and sometimes you only meet that horse when you walk into the paddock. You have 12 minutes with that horse and, and less than 30 seconds standing beside that horse before you're legged up on that animal and you're going out to compete in a, in a horse race. So uh, the, the bond is, is very, very important, and sometimes you have to build it very quickly, and sometimes it, can de it develops over time. So... Um, there's different horses. I've had a very long career with, with a lot of different animals. Um, there's some that I've uh, become very close with. Uh, just kind of pull at your heartstrings and, and you just, you, you don't even, you can't pick your friends. It just it sort of seems that you just become really good friends. And I've got a few of those those horses out there that I'm, I'm really close with. And, and if I could take them all home, I would, but. And now the Good to Know Minute. Uh, what would be your one key uh, piece of advice to her that has been the, the piece that's been your key to success? Well, there, there's there's two things I would say. One thing would be as a as a female entering in any um, male dominated uh, industry to to look beyond that, lead by example. Don't focus on the woman in the male dominated industry. Just be the person in the game and and in terms of someone following me in ter as, a, as a jockey following my footsteps is is work ethic be your own teacher and be your own be your own teacher and and be willing to learn this game we don't have you know there's no college horse racing there's no high school horse racing, as there's high school football, high school uh, or college football, etc. You have to be your own coach and find your own way. And so you have to be motivated enough to do that. Don't let people kick you down and just keep on going. Be true to yourself, be 100%. And and you also have had a chance to travel a little bit. You've, you've been uh, riding at the Ascot or in connection to at the Ascot? Yeah. Um, Ascot has um, an a international jock challenge that they put on every year called the Shergar Cup. And uh, I was invited back to participate as captain this year, so uh, was uh, able to get that. And it's been my, it'll be my, my third event, I think. Third? Yes. Third event. So. And I've had a chance to go to Hong Kong as well as a, for an international jock challenge as well. And so I've, I've had a lot of opportunities to travel with my job, which has been, you know, something that I don't think a lot of people can, can say with, with a job that they've had. So horse racing has been very, very good to me. And what is then next for you in your future? Uh, right now I'm focused on finding the next fastest horse. Uh, until then... Um, I, I don't even know. I, I think I'm just going to let, uh, as we say in horse racing, let the, the flow of the race take me in, in the direction I need to be. So, If you were to actually a jockey, what would you be? What would you do with your 
with your career? Wow, that's a that's a very good question. Um, I remember I was just out of college. I did a two-year equine program, so I'm pretty sure it would be to do with horses. Um, I contemplated being a vet for a little while. I even thought about uh, being a blacksmith. Honestly, I, I wouldn't know exactly where the road would have taken me. It seemed like this was my destiny, but I know that it would have been something to do with horses or animals, so maybe a zookeeper or something. So give us a sense of what a typical day looks for you. Well, it's, it's funny, actually, because when I was a kid growing up, my mother would never believe that I would get a job where I have to get up at 5 o'clock in the morning because I was terrible at getting up at, to go to school. I mean, I'm talking water on the head at eight o'clock in the morning because I was already late so but uh, I generally get up about five five thirty and I'm I'm in at the track training uh, race horses happens between six and ten o'clock in the morning so we get the horses out and get them trained each horse takes roughly about a half an hour um, as a jockey I just typically do fast timed workouts so each horse goes out and does a specific uh, timed workout for that set as we call them once that's done, once training is done by 10 o'clock, between on a race day, between about 10, 10 to 11, I'll bounce around, see some trainers, talk to some people, a little bit of PR, etc. And then I'll get into the jocks room to get organized for the day's racing. On a busy day, I can ride up to 10 races in a cart, so I have my homework to do. Sit down and I'll do my handicapping, go through all the races, look at my horse and what their running style is, look at the other horses and assess what their running style is and paint a picture in my head as to how I think the race will go and how I think I can win. And I will do that for every single race. Make some notes on my form and then as each race comes up, so starting one o'clock, first race post time, I will go through my racing form just double check my notes, just quick reference, and then I'll go out and, and ride each race. Converse with the trainers and ride each race. And we probably do the same kind of thing. We probably race every 25 minutes or so. So it's uh, pretty back to back to back. So I ride for different owners, for different trainers, etc. So I will say I ride the first race and I win. Everything's great, very good energy, very happy. I go back into the jocks room. I look at my form and I go back out for the very next race for a complete, most of the time, completely different people, different owners, different trainers. That win that I just had is yesterday's ball game. The next race is the next competition. So same thing, if something negative happens, say I don't win or uh, you know something happens where I get shut off and it's a, not a great game, so to speak, I have to go back into the jocks room turn the page as I like to say it and go on to the next competition so it's um, it's quite an interesting dynamic the way we do things whereas in most professional sports they will play one competition and then say have a couple of days until their next one ours is boom 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 non-stop until about six o'clock so it's a can be pretty long hours but uh it's, it's great. I love my job. And uh, I just have to sort of add that I've had the pleasure of watching you race a few times. And uh, it's been an honor. And uh, I'm so grateful for you to share your story uh, and your message with us today. So I wish you all the best uh, for the rest of the season and, and beyond. If you would like to be a guest on Extraordinary Women TV, visit our website at ExtraordinaryWomenTV.com. I'd love to hear from you. Follow me on Twitter at Shannon underscore Skinner or on Facebook at Extraordinary Women TV. I'm Shannon Skinner. Join us next time for another episode of Extraordinary Women TV.